Welcome back. I wish I could understand this guy. It's obvious that he's going on about the Super Famicom this system. I like the way he says it. This system! Okay, that's a bad joke. This is a system that was exclusive to Japan and I know absolutely nothing about it other than the research I've done for this video. This is the console that you're probably familiar with and I'm especially familiar with in the West. This is the Japanese version known as the Family Computer, commonly referred to as the Famicom. It came in two flavors, one where the disk system sat beneath the console and another where it's all built in. And these are what the discs look like. Apparently over 200 games, uh, commercial games were released for the system. And the family disc system comes with an enhanced sound chip. I decided to do this video uh, after watching Metal Jesus Rocks uh, interview John Blue Riggs, who's a collector of the system. And uh, yeah, check that video out. It's really interesting what he had to say. There seems to be a battle going on here over who gets to turn on the light switch first. <laughs> but seriously, I'm in uncharted territory here. So this video is as much a discovery for you as it is for me. Interesting thing my wife uh, and I discussed the other day. She reckons that Japanese games are boring compared to Western games. As you can imagine, my natural reaction was one of bewilderment. She thinks that the Japanese games are all about telling you to do things where she likes to do things and work things out for herself. What do people think? Do you think she has a point? There appears to be a lot of fun games on this uh, on this system, and this is just one of them. So yeah, I can definitely vouch for this one. Uh, it's fun. Apparently, allegedly, don't quote me on this one, but uh, this is the console that hosted debuts of Zelda, uh, Kid Icarus, and Metroid. The name of this game roughly translates in English to Love Warrior Nicole, and I give it an eight out of 10, it's good. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name of this game, but it's a, it's a weird one. It's a bit like um, a shoot 'em up comes Arcanide. I'm not going to play this long enough to reveal the picture uh, underneath because um, I don't want to get a strike on YouTube. But shocking from Nintendo, especially since the name is titled Family Computer. <laughs> uh, the music's all right. The graphics look half decent. It's not really my cup of tea. I've not got any idea what this would have cost back in the day, but I'll give it a 6 out of 10. This is uh, obviously a Castlevania game, so the yardstick, the benchmark that I can measure this against are all the Castlevania games I've played on the uh, NDS, 3DS and God knows how many other consoles. Again, I've only scratched or started to scratch the surface uh, on this system, but um, from what I can tell, there's a good, there seems to be, appears to be a good challenge here. It looks good, it sounds good. Uh, let me know what you think. I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. Not sure what to say. Um, not even sure what this, is this Super Mario Bros? Um, fantastic, brilliant game. Don't think I've ever played a bad Mario game. Well, I'll actually tell a lie, Super Mario Land or World on the Game Boy, the original, that was awful. But thankfully they fixed it with the, the second game. Even these games today, my uh, three-year-old and six-year-old absolutely love Mario. So I can't see how this differentiates from the NES version, but I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. I know this game as the little computer people on the Amstrad CPC uh, and Commodore 64. Apparently this version is known as Appletown. Weird. As with the versions I mentioned, this is uh, identical. There's more colour in use, I think. Uh, the sound's a bit more annoying, but um, I spent hours playing this back in the day. Absolute hours. So I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. A very pleasant surprise to find this one on a Japanese system. How on God's green earth did I not know about this game? It's absolutely fantastic. I love it. It looks like a Japanese version of Indiana Jones mixed with Bionic Commando and a twist of Castlevania thrown in for good measure. I'm very happy to have found this game. Um, very, very happy. It's, it's quality stuff. Does anybody know what other systems this came out on? 
Um, I certainly haven't seen it on the NES or the Super Nintendo. I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10 because I keep coming back to it and I can't just put it down. This looks absolutely brilliant, but sadly, the language barrier is holding me back. I guess the dream with a system like this, especially if you're uh, a Westerner or somebody in Great Britain or the US that wants to collect, is that as many of these games get translated into English as possible. At the end of the day, if it's a game, I, I want to be able to play it and uh, experience it. If anybody knows of a translation for this game, please let me know. Sadly, I don't know enough about it uh, and haven't experienced it enough to give it a rating, but uh, watch this space. I don't know if this has got anything to do with uh, a game I played years ago on the uh, Commodore 64, Baby Joe. No idea, but um, it's a baby and you've got some sort of dummy or a rattle and you're smacking people over the head with it. Um, honestly, it's bags of fun. Honestly, it really is. It's uh, so addictive. No idea what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm um, just going with the flow. It looks like there's massive support from Konami on this system. Yeah, I'll give this one a 8 out of 10. Family computer my backside. That's a penis. Trying to impregnate anything but a vagina. I've no idea what's going on, really. Um, goodness me. I probably would have found this massively hilarious back in the day. Makes me laugh because in the West, parents were worried about Barbarian and um, Renegade. Did Japanese parents even give a crap about this stuff? I'm sure somebody must have had fun playing this, but uh, certainly not my cup of tea. I'll give this one a 5 out of 10. It must rain a lot in Japan because this is the sort of game if I did buy for a computer I'd only stay in and play worst case if the weather was dreadful outside. I'm, I'm sure it's good but why would you play this over the actual um, board game as in the pieces? It would have cost more and it won't be as interactive as playing the real thing. I'm sure there's people out there that will have bought this and loved it. I mean if you sit down and play it, it is a good game. I'll give this one a 7 out of 10, but it's not something I would expect from a console. Uh, I think I've played lots of games like this on the Amstrad CPC, the ZX Spectrum and the Commodore 64. Sports of Kings from Mastertronic rings a bell. Maybe this has a bit more to it than that. I can't for the life of me think why I'd want to play this because I'm not really into horse racing as it is. And if I'm honest, looking at the images, I'd prefer Samantha Fox, uh, Strip Poker. But that's a game uh, and a conversation for a whole new video. I'd like to give this a rating, but I don't feel qualified. This is another one I don't get. Nice music, decent graphics, but I'd rather get the cards out of the pack and play with the family that way. These sorts of games um, must have some sort of following, um, but... Uh, you know what, I don't want to be critical of this sort of game because every type of game has got an audience. It plays decent enough, but um, it's not something I imagine myself playing on this system in isolation. Let me know your thoughts. Did you play this one? Did you like it? What do you rate it? On to the next. Another one. No idea. <laughs> um... What I can't believe about this uh, system is apparently the um, it takes batteries. Yeah, it can actually be powered by batteries. You can also write to the uh, floppy disk as well, which is a weird format for Nintendo to choose because that would have opened the doors uh, up to piracy. Now, I lost my virginity to an Atari VCS. It wasn't even my own. Uh, I'd have preferred a ColecoVision. But imagine losing your virginity to this. It's a great little system, a nice little companion to the uh, Famicom. I looked this one up. Over about 20 people actually worked on this game. The story goes you're a witch and the dream is that you want to become a princess. It has that Zelda look and feel about it, albeit a slow version. But I've just not been able to work out what it is really that I've got to do. What I've got to pick up, who I've got to talk to. And there's a game of bingo that you can play that, well, I'm just not a fan of bingo. 
And what the bloody hell is Snoopy doing in this game? I'll give this one an initial score of 6 out of 10. There's definitely a game there. I've not been able to give this one uh, the attention it deserves. Um, but it's alright, what I've seen so far. Um, and it's in English as well. I'm not sure if it's been translated into English or this is the way it was launched in Japan. But um, yeah, it's alright. And uh, I think it's one I'm going to go back to. It seems to be a decent enough uh, early RPG. The music grinds a little bit. The draw distance isn't great, if I'm honest. But considering this is from way back in 1986, it's great. I shall reserve judgment on the score. All I'm really doing is skimming the surface with these games. Uh, this second one, the music seems to have improved a little bit, but it's still, it's still great, it's still a little annoying. But again, I've not given it anywhere near the attention this sort of game deserves. I can't even begin to critique it. Uh, I've not spent enough time with it. And it looks from reading the instructions that it's quite complex and there's quite a bit of a game here. Also, after playing games like Zelda and Pokemon, will this have the staying power to keep me glued to the screen? Apparently this one is based on a, a movie or a, a series in Japan. So it would be good to get your thoughts on this. Looks alright. Um, plays alright. Decent enough shoot em up. Um, very difficult though. That ship reminds me of the Wind Raider in Masters of the Universe. So it seems alright. I've played worse. It's probably not a game you'd write home about. Nothing really jumps out at you. Whenever I see Bandai uh, on the cover, that does make me, gives me concerns. Nearly every system I've played Donkey Kong on, and I'm including the ZX Spectrum, the Amstrad CPC, uh, and all the other 8 bits, including this, and the ColecoVision, maybe even the Atari 2600, I've all played a decent game. And from what I can tell so far, this is almost arcade perfect. I'm unsure what the difference uh, with this and the NES version is. And I don't know if it's just me, but I was able to clear the first couple of screens quite easily. If Donkey Kong is considered the greatest video game of all time, then Donkey Kong Jr. should be considered the second greatest video game of all time. As arcade conversions go, um, I can't really fault this. Everything is there, uh, intact, and hasn't been lost in translation. This one might seem simple in its premise, but trust me, you've got to calculate every move you make in this game. I'll give this one a 9 out of 10. I've got no real idea what's going on here. I'm just running along, running and gunning, shooting the crap out of everything I can see. That alone in itself is fun. Be nice to know what I'm supposed to do here definitely needs uh, an English translation as it looks quite a good game. There seems to be survival horror style elements to the game uh, as in with Resident Evil where you scroll through your weapons and your items. Again I can't really judge this one. Um, maybe this was out on the NES. In fact I'll look for it and see uh, how that plays. So this is titled Dracula 2. Um, I think in the West we know it as Castlevania 2. I mean, this and the previous are basically the building blocks for Metroidvania going forward. It's nice and fast, it looks good, it has an eerie feel to it, it's non-linear, the music sounds really good. I've no idea what this plays like on the real hardware because apparently there's disc swapping involved. So this, for me, is a great way to experience the game through emulation. I'll give this one a nice solid 8 out of 10. When I first saw this, I had to take a second look. This is Druid, and I played this originally on the Commodore 64, and then later on the Amstrad CPC. And yeah, it's the same game. But what the hell is it doing on a Japanese-only console? As far as I'm aware, this is a British Telecom Firebird game. It's only when I look at the uh, developers involved for the original that I notice there's a guy called Wing La, 
or Wing Lao, and maybe that's the connection. Excellent game. I've got no idea what people will think of this game, but I quite like it. It's it's quite fun. I love the bouncy little tune. It takes me back. There's not much colour, but what there is is well defined. It's sketchy at best um, on content, but in a good way. It's as simple in practice as it is in theory. But just be aware, the difficulty on offer here is uh, exceedingly high. I'd have never have left my bedroom uh, as a kid if I'd have had this console for all the wrong reasons. She looks like a gold digger to me. She's gunning for gold, boys. Enjoy the show. She's definitely holding all the cards. That's what you call true power play. This is definitely a Sam Fox strip poker Nintendo killer. I need to be careful with this video because it's looking like she wants to take it all the way. She looks very doid, yes, very doid, like a doiger. This is quite an interesting game. This one has also been translated by a fan into English. It feels like uh, another fantastic gaming discovery here. And can you believe this came out uh, as early as 1987? I like the animation and the uh, opening cutscenes. The story seems good as well. This game is so freaking smooth. Look at it. So far, I mean, it feels like there's so much freedom in the game. And I'm looking forward to properly sitting down with this one. It's too early for me to score this, but I'm looking at around the 8 or 9 mark. I had World Series Baseball back on the Amstrad CPC when I was a kid. And if you're into these types of baseball games, these are absolutely brilliant. Graphically, uh, I've seen Stronger. I think RBI Baseball 2, that was really good. I like the addition of the baseball glove there. There's a lot of authenticity in this game and it's easy to pick up and uh, accessibility is really really good I mean once you've played NBA Jam in the arcade and uh, the stuff that followed I find it really hard to go back to the older uh, basketball games I think the graphics are a little bit naff but what this does have is bags of speed and that helps ramp up the excitement a notch. I imagine this one's got its fan base, but uh, sadly, I'm not one of them. And I can't imagine me ever picking this game up to play it and while away a few hours. So, a 6 out of 10 from me. Yeah, this one, uh, it looks alright and uh, I quite like the music. It's quite good that you've got an animation of the player uh, as he takes his shot at the top of the screen. But if I want to play snooker, billiards, pool, whatever you want to call it, um, post-pandemic, I think I'd rather head down the local snooker or pool club. These types of games are better two-player games, as no matter the scenario, it's always good to challenge your mate. Mm, if I had to rate this game, I'd probably give it a 5 out of 10. I don't know much about this game, um, I can't even pronounce it, but um, it reminds me a little bit of Micropro Soccer mixed with another game I had on the Amstrad CPC uh, called Fighting Soccer and I'm a sucker for a good footy game, especially a two player one. I still remember and rate Emlyn News International Soccer on the Amstrad CPC and Commodore 64, but I stopped playing everything after Sensible Soccer came out. Um, I give this one a 7 out of 10. Quite liked it. I'm a massive uh, shoot 'em up fan. Um, I'm pretty sure if you subscribe to my channel, you already know that. This reminds me a little bit of um, Space Harrier crossed with Buck Rogers. But what surprised me is how accurate you can pull off your shots. There's some bloody fast and furious action in this game. Actually, the other game that comes to mind is Galaxy Force. So we've got great graphics, great music, and great gameplay. It's a strike. Just don't run out of missiles. For me, um, yeah, 9 out of 10. 
This feels just like Outrun, really, for the Famicom disk system. There's even forks in the road. <laughs> I've got no idea what's going on with the graphics for the street lamps. But yeah, this is basically Outrun with a damage system. And guess what? It's bloody brilliant. It's nice and fast, goes like shit off a shovel. And I love the music. And as you can see there, the graphics are fantastic. What a shame then that I'd never heard of this game. Easily uh, 8 out of 10. Famicom Grand Prix 2. Thing of beauty. As with football, um, I'm a massive sucker for golf games. Don't ask me why. Um, probably my favourite is World Class Leaderboard from Epix back in the day. Published by US Gold in the UK. Well, what I mean there is it's the one I spent the most time with. This seems quite jolly enough. I like the music. I like it and I think I would have stuck with this back in the day. I think the layout is quite clever and the control system's good. As I've said, I'm a massive sucker for golf games and uh, this system's got quite a good uh, variety in that department. Loving the uh, pink hat and uh, golfing gear. Mario is uh, sporting there, doing his bit for LGBT. I'm pretty sure that you could stick Mario in any type of game uh, with a good formula and it would sell bucket loads. But it just so turns out that this is actually quite a good game. Yeah, I'm not a massive fan of this sort of translation uh, to a video game or computer game. I'm sure it's got its audience. Uh, I don't doubt that for one second. But for me, I couldn't think of anything worse to do. Give me run and gun, shoot em up such as Gallagher, R-Type, you name it. Or a good old fashioned game of lemmings any day over stuff like this. In fact, the other day I played Operation Wolf. Epic. Now this is more up my street, definitely my cup of tea. I'm not entirely sure if this is the same game, but back on the Amstrad CPC, I had a game very similar to this that was called Jackal. Now that game was also from Konami, but this is 10 times better. I'm definitely at my happiest when I'm shooting folk and raging all out war. <laughs> I'm a fan and I give this one eight out of 10. I quite like the look of this. I like the way the character jumps around and the animation on the enemy sprites. It's good how there are platforms that look impossible to reach, but you can actually climb the walls and then jump onto them. It's quite a big game for the time. It's about 52K in size. It feels very similar to other games I've played, but it's just not as good. But I can't quite put my finger on why it's not as good. There's definitely something missing. It's a shame really because I like the look of it, but maybe I'm doing something wrong, let me know. Oh yeah. Now that's what I'm talking about. yippee ki -yay. Apologies in advance. Uh, I love shoot em ups. I love them so much that I've purchased a Sega Saturn Japanese version just for the privilege of playing its massive back catalogue of shoot em ups. The problem is I'm married with children and there's hardly any time to thoroughly enjoy them. But this game is all things to all genres. Be prepared to grind. Surprise, surprise, it's another golf game. <laughs> so what I've learned, if anything, from this uh, Famicom disc system is that the Japanese love golf. And once again, I'd quite happily play this one for hours. I'm not sure if this is Mario this time around, but he seems to have put a little bit of weight on there. He's got a, a midlife spread. They must have put him on a massive fitness regime after this game to get him ready for Super Mario. But for 1984, you can't. Back then, you couldn't have asked for better than this. I think this one is Kid Icarus. 
certainly looks that way. I never played this on the NES, but I did play it on the Game Boy. And I also played Kid Icarus Uprising on the 3DS, and that was epic. But I absolutely love this on the FDS. I think it's an absolute thing of beauty. I think it's a bit more unforgiving and difficult than the Game Boy version. But what's not to like? It's Kid Icarus, and it does everything right. There's an NHL game on the Mega Drive or the SNES, or it might have even came out later, but it did everything right, everything that you'd want from an ice hockey game. So it's really difficult to play that and then come back to something like this. But believe me, this is actually quite fun. It looks a bit noddy. There's the jolly sounds uh, and spot effects. And for the time, it's decent enough, I suppose. Oh, sadly, I've no idea what's going on here. And it looks quite fun. A little bit provocative, if you like. I bet these, this game and lots of other games uh, have been translated now. But, um, yeah, crazy manga-style graphics there. What with eyes popping out the head. <laughs> Looks like he's being caught perving by the headmistress. Nice jolly tune there, so it seems nice enough. But, uh, no idea. Not a Scooby. Here's one that's been translated uh, back in 2005. Uh, it's pleasant enough, quite like it. The only issue I've got is I just haven't got the time in my life to dedicate myself to a game like this anymore. But if you'd have shown me this type of game as a kid, I'd have just sat there for probably days, weeks on end playing it. As a Japanese kid growing up, this would have definitely have been a, a good system to own. And I can understand why people collect for it, uh, especially in the West as well. And from what I've seen, I'd, I'd have been sad to have parted with this console. It was a pleasant surprise to come across this one. Karate Champ on the FDS. It's no IK Plus or Way of the Exploding Fist, but for the time, um, I'd have liked this. It's highly playable. There's a, a good learning curve to it. I can't help when I walk away from this thinking about how the sprites could have been better and less flickery. And the referee just seems like a big blob sitting there, useless, doing nothing. But you can't really criticize this game because it does exactly what it says on the tin. Let's go, champ. Looks pleasant enough. Graphics are nice, albeit very basic. Not sure how big this game is, but um, there's a challenge. I've got zero zilch idea what you have to do. So unfortunately, I've kind of like blundered through it. What on earth is going on here? Um, looks a little bit like Ghostbusters. It's a shame that it's not in English because I've got a three and a six year old daughter that love anything princess. What the frig is going on here? Looks pleasant enough, but goodness me. Weird. But in all seriousness, this is the same guy who programmed Tetris. So I need to give this game a chance and some respect. But essentially you have to move around the board the way you would on a chess board. And using the same uh, chess moves with the knight, you have to collect the heart or multiple hearts. It's really fun, but I can't understand why it was only released in Japan. Oh boy. Here we go. Wait for it. Hey! It looks like you've got a series of water guns and you spray her clothes and then she has to take them off. <laughs> what the fuck, the Japanese are crazy. But in a good, in a child sort of way. I need to be careful here. Um, I don't want a YouTube ban. Way, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, nothing to see here. I absolutely massive fan, mad for it, 
when it comes to Zelda. Such a shame then that I can't find an English translation for this one. Don't mock me on this one, but my favourite Zelda game of all time, without question, is definitely Majora's Mask. I played it on the N64 but could never complete it. I played it on the 3DS or other console I can never remember and finally completed it and loved every minute of it. I'd love to experience this one as well. Ear screeching, ugh, inducing music aside. Not a fan of this in the slightest. Don't like these types of uh, puzzle games. Um, they're okay, I suppose, as like an extra level or something. But it appears to me as if the whole, well, this is the game. And that, for me, uh, is an insult to the FDS system. I'm not entirely sure how much these games will have cost back in the day, but I can't believe for a second somebody would have purchased this. This is a good game. Uh, it would have been a great game if you didn't hop around like a madman. I had a game similar to this, well not similar, um, but with the jump mechanic that's going on here. Uh, Hopper Copper, uh, I think Firebird released it, it was for the Amstrad CPC. And it ruined what could have been a great game. Fortunately, the jumping bit hasn't ruined this game, it's still really good. It just doesn't need it. I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. This one looks alright. Is this, how is this different to the NES version? Does anybody know? Unfortunately, I've only ever played Metroid on the Super Nintendo, and that was great. Well, of course I had it uh, on the um, GameCube as well, and I played the latest uh, 3DS versions. But the GameCube versions, they were FPS, as you know. But this is really addictive. I'd say that this is uh, a fantastic little game. I might try and discover this one a little bit more. Right now, it feels like a 9 out of 10. No idea what's going on here. Is that a cat? Cats in space or something? I love cats. We've got um, seven, uh, four of which are kittens. I was allowed to name one of the kittens and I've called it Yoda. As of recording this video now, uh, the kittens have only just opened their eyes. We've got pet rats as well. Don't ask, wasn't my idea. I'm actually shit scared of them. I think they look cute and everything, but it's the tails. Ugh. It's been a little bit painful playing through some of these games. Not all, but something like this is well worth the wait. I've not played this before. I've not played it on the NES either, otherwise I, I know I'd remember. This is brilliant. Wow, lovely smooth scrolling, um, nice animations, good use of colour. You couldn't, for the time, have asked for a better shoot 'em up It's only when I play games like this that I think to myself, Mark, you need to hunt down one of these systems. We are sailing, we are sailing. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Looks like another puzzle game and uh, there's only a few puzzle games I resonate with that I actually like. Obviously Tetris being one of them, Clax is another, but um, Puzzle Bobble, that's another good one. But uh, outside of those and probably another four or five, just not my cup of tea I'm afraid. Apparently, don't quote me on this, but this is Monty on the Run by Gremlin Graphics. And this is a translated version. It came out in 1986. But what the fuck? I'd have absolutely loved this. And it's nothing like the version that I played back in the day. So how did a Gremlin Graphics game end up on a Japanese only released console? What other uh, Gremlin graphics games are Japanese exclusive? I quite like the look of this one. It feels like Arkanoid. Maybe the bat is a little bit too big. 
But uh, yeah, there's lots going on. It's a little bit sedate-like compared to the Arkanoid original. But uh, it's alright, it's pleasant enough. I would definitely have played this back yeah, back in the day, uh, and I think I'd have enjoyed it. There doesn't seem to be much in the way of colour going on. It's there, but it's just not much. Uh, but the graphics are well defined. We've got another really good game here, translated into English. This looks and plays a lot like Zelda, but in an Ikari Warriors Commando style of way which means they basically ditched all the adventure elements and I for one quite like it. I've no idea why this wasn't released in Europe. People would have lapped it up, would have loved it, especially being based on feudal Japan. Apparently this was released um, on the 3DS in the US, but uh, I haven't played it. So this is a first for me. This one looks pretty jolly. On this particular level, you've got to turn the 8x8 squares uh, white. When I come across a game that's in Japanese only, it kind of like instantly puts me on the back foot. It's not just one game, it's like a collection of uh, six mini games if you like. And if I understood what they were going on about, I think I'd enjoy this one. I really would. And it looks like it's a good family game. It's by Sunsoft as well, so absolutely gutted. Now this is a follow-up to the previous uh, mini-games that we've just come across. Uh, Nazola Landai 2 was the, the previous, this is 3. Apologies about the bad translation there. I particularly like the graphical style in this, but sadly, once again, I'm hamstrung because of the language barrier. If anybody can help me here and knows of a translation for these games, I'd be really intrigued, really interested and forever thankful. Again, this is uh, from the same stable, um, so this must be number four. And again, it's a series of mini games. Maybe they were able to release these types of games because of the affordability of the uh, Famicom disc, but definitely intrigued, um, but can't say any more than that because I just can't really experience this game in, uh, or this series of games in their entirety. Okay, not funny anymore. This is another one. And, uh, yeah. I'll let you watch. This one has a German name, Neinzin, which in English means 19. Some Clever Sausage has also translated it into English. The action is turn-based, but happens in real time. Yeah, don't ask. And it plays out like a Japanese game of chess. There's three other armies on the map, and your goal is basically to find them, pursue them, and wipe them out. It's no command and conquer, but you can see where the ideas came from originally. Apparently, this is the game that went on to create the Fire Pro Wrestling series of games. There's six wrestlers, and um, I grew up playing Rock and Wrestle and the WWF WrestleMania uh, from Ocean Software, and I've got good memories of those. But uh, this this seems to do better. It looks awful by today's standards, but um, it nails it. The core gameplay mechanics are good, so if you're into wrestling games, I think you'll like this. I think this is the third in the series on the Famicom disc system, and this is the four-player version. The This type of game is definitely uh, only popular really in China and Japan. Mm, don't really play it in Europe, but uh, I have played uh, a game similar to this on the Amstrad CPC. 
never really understood this type of game on a computer or a console because you don't actually win anything. Now this one has a weird premise. You're a fan, you've attended a concert, and one of Japan's uh, upcoming pop idols is front stage and center. All of a sudden the skies darken and your adventure story begins. Sounds massively ridiculous. Unfortunately, I don't have a Scooby how to play it, but it's got the old adventure element to it as well. Not quite text-based. It looks to be more menu-driven. And I wager it's a good game because Konami's behind it. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong by all means, but this just looks like cheap tat. Surely they could have made more of it. Personally, I'd have taken this straight back to the shop. We had games back in the UK that were around $1.99 or $2.99 that were light years ahead of this stuff. And also, personally, I had uh, access to my dad's secret stash of porn. Not so secret, eh? But fair play to them, they actually show you on the cover how crap this game is. If you love the old adventure games uh, before the days of point and click, especially those who liked the Bard's Tale series, I think you, like me, uh, will be right at home here. And the best part is that it's been translated to English. What's weird is you don't actually have a samurai sword, despite the game being called Samurai Sword, but you're in the hunt, you have to hunt one down so that you can take out an evil priest or something. Underneath these graphics and a mountain of text, it's a deep story. Uh, it's quite a good game. Well, anybody in Europe, Great Britain, will know this one as Ping Pong. And uh, it's a fantastic game, really addictive. And this one feels arcade perfect to me. The difficulty is set just right. It slowly brings you in as you progress through the levels. And for me, this, this game really does, on lots of different platforms, stand the test of time. In fact, you can put this one down for years and not play it, and then come back years later, and you can pick up where you left off. It's like riding a bike. I like to judge these footy games on the year that they came out, uh, and not look back at them now with Superstar Soccer or FIFA goggles. And I, I quite like it, I think it's addictive. I would have played this. I mean, I played uh, World Cup by Arctic on the Amstrad CPC as a kid and thought that was brilliant. So that's the kind of mindset I'm looking for when uh, I re I'm looking at these games or reviewing them or being uh, critical. As far as recommendations go, you're either into footy games or you're not. Another game I had on the Amstrad CPC and I think I played it on the Commodore 64 but this one is Super Load Runner and although it looks really basic by today's standards um, and standards back then really I quite like it I can't hide it I'm a fan of these types of games I like Bruce Lee an older game called Chucky Egg Manic Miner and my kids love these types of games as well so kudos I'm one of those people that don't think there's anything wrong with more of the same great stuff. And that's basically what you get here, more of the same stuff. I remember a couple of games I had back in the day, uh, Renegade and uh, Target Renegade, and I just wish that the third game could have been a mixture of the first two games and not try to reinvent the wheel, because they already had a fantastic formula. But as I've mentioned, this is just more of the same good stuff. Well, this is just a great game, isn't it? That's the the only thing I can say, really. I didn't experience um, Mario or Super Mario on the NES. I first experienced Super Mario games on the Super Nintendo, which came with the Super Mario All Stars games, and it had the Mario it had Mario One, Two, Three, 
and the Super Mario Land or World. I absolutely love them. My sister was fantastic at all of them and completed them. Again, uh, what can I say? I think the second one was miles better than the first one. But my favourite, let me think, I think Mario 3. I know graphically it wasn't the best, and I can only talk from the experience of playing, playing it on the Super Nintendo, but I think I found it easier, more playable than Super Mario World. But irregardless, I don't think, apart from the original Game Boy version, that I've played a bad Mario game. So this is uh, a form of Japanese chess. I'm not going to lie to you, I couldn't get into this and I don't really understand what it is that you've got to do. But I would like to find out more uh, about Japan, discover Japan and one day visit Japan. I don't know why I was always obsessed with America growing up as a kid. But later on, I became obsessed with Japan. I think that grows and stems from video games and probably none so more than Shenmue. Also, I guess video games have exposed me to the rich culture of Japan. I'm not really into tennis games, if I'm honest. Uh, there was one tennis game on the Atari 800XL that I really liked. And then I don't feel as though they mastered tennis properly until I played Virtua Tennis on the Dreamcast. Now, that was good, but it was really arcadey. And then they brought out Virtua Tennis 2 that went even more extreme arcade. And then it just lost the plot and I lost interest. But yeah, this seems decent enough. Now this type of game for me um, reinforces why I'd probably want to collect this system. Um, and just, just have it sitting there and play it every now and again with these types of games. These are my favourite types of games basically. And this one is no exception. It's really fast, it's fun, it looks decent. I guess we have to remember when these games came out, so it was early days. But the vertical scroll is fantastic and the challenge is brilliant. Again, I need to be honest, I'm not really a fan of this type of game. Um, I'm a fan, believe it or not, of Excite Bike 64 that came out on the N64. I thought that was absolutely brilliant, and it's still one of my favorite games of all time. I wish Nintendo wouldn't ignore that game. I really do like it, and it needs a remake. In fact, that, GoldenEye, and a few other games are the reason I still keep my N64. This is alright, a bit basic, but I'd have definitely played this. It's got a little bit of Pac-Man, Pepper, Oh Mummy going on about it, Amadar I think it was called. Absolutely love the tune that plays in the background. And that uh, vehicle looks a little bit like uh, Big Track. I don't know if you recall, it's the one that brings the apple or banana to the, to the kid's dad in the UK advert. But yeah, this looks brilliant, really good. And it's Tato! Wow, so a quick Google search and apparently this is Super Mario 2 and the only reason I recognise that it's Super Mario 2 is because again I had this on the Super Nintendo, it was part of the Super Mario pack and my sister used to play as the princess and I remember that she'd pick those things up, those roots out of the ground and throw them. So what happened here then, is this some weird license restriction? Don't get me wrong, it's a great game and uh, you know You'd be a fool not to play it, it's that good. I've included this one, I wish I hadn't, I don't know why I did. I've not got a clue what's going on, it looks like you've got to reveal a person. I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not a fan of these types of games. Unfortunately they seem to litter the Famicom disc system. Personally for me it's another waste of a disc and it leaves me with a bitter taste in my mouth.
apparently this is the original and host to the Famicom disk system and you get to use the microphone and the atmosphere, the sound effects and the music are brilliant, much better than you get on the NES version. Sadly we've reached the end, I've really enjoyed this one. If you like this video please don't forget to comment, like, ring that bell uh, for future subscriptions and also please don't forget to subscribe. If people like this video I'd like to do a part two. Until next time, ta a bit!